Hi everyone. In this video, I will be introducing you to the API feature in Ivanti Patch for Windows Servers. So, let's get started. The API feature enables you to execute API level calls from a PowerShell console. This feature is meant for advanced users who have a working knowledge of PowerShell and who want to perform tasks beyond those available through the normal product user interface. You can use the API feature for a number of different reasons. You might interact with different systems in your environment, such as vulnerability scanners, password management tools, SQL Server clusters, and orchestrators, such as Chef or Puppet. You might script out a sequence of complex events that contain dependencies. For example, you might patch one machine in a cluster and make sure that everything goes according to plan before proceeding with the other machines in the cluster. Or, you might script out actions such as suspending nodes, starting and stopping services at certain points, or restarting machines in a specific order. You can perform bulk operations or process list inputs from other systems. For example, you might dynamically perform a scan operation by targeting systems listed in a file. Finally, you can programmatically stage patch deployments or initiate patch downloads. API commands are available for use with many functional areas in Ivanti Patch for Windows Servers, including patch scanning, patch deployment, credentials, machine groups, patch groups, and power state management. You can leverage existing configuration and workflow concepts in any of these areas. This means you can reference existing credentials, machine groups, templates, logging, etc within your API commands. You can also use the API to add new credentials, templates, and groups. Actions that you drive from the API receive the same level of tracking as those initiated from the user interface. In addition, the results of API-driven actions are reflected in the user interface. The results are labeled to distinguish between API-initiated runs and console-initiated runs. For example, in preparation for this video, I initiated a couple of patch scans using the API. If I switch to the results pane, I can see that the results of the scans are labeled as either agentless, for those that were run from the console, or as API, for those that were initiated using the API and I don't have any here, but the source column will also identify any scans that were initiated by an agent. These steps for getting started with the API feature are pretty basic. The first step is to launch a PowerShell console on the Patch for Windows Server's console machine. I already have a PowerShell console running, so let me quickly pop that up. Be sure to specify Run as Administrator when you launch your PowerShell console. The first time you use the API, you should load the STProtect API module. You do this by executing the import module PowerShell command. I ran this command earlier while preparing for this video, so I can use the up arrow shortcut to quickly find and execute the command again. The STProtect API module contains API calls that allow you to interact with many of the functional areas within Ivanti Patch for Windows Servers. And that's it. We are now ready to use the API. If you want to view the complete list of commands that are available to you, you can do so by executing the get module command. Let's finish this video by doing something productive. I'll use the start patch scan command to initiate a patch scan of my machine. I'll use pipelining within the command so that I can add the watch patch scan parameter and view the output. And we're done. If I flip back to the program and perform a refresh,
the new API-driven scan is now displayed in the results pane. And that's as far as I'll take it in this video. For a more in-depth demonstration on how to use the API commands, see the next video in this series. For more information about Ivanti Patch for Windows Servers or any of our other products, please visit our product documentation page. Thanks for watching.